go, we're back, guys and girls. Look who it is, Jack Jarrett. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hope you're well. Apparently, you're a huge celebrity. Uh, I'm not in my own lunch box at best. <laughs> That's about it. I told Liam you're coming on. He's like, oh, oh very, my God, very my excited, legend. Mate. Very, very excited. <laughs> you see him on the uh, body trim commercials for many, yeah. many years? <laughs> How good is that? Mate, you're showing your age. That was a few <laughs> years ago now. Very kind morning, TV. You must have been at uni. Mate, I, was, I think it was before uni. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, big, big fan. No, I'm actually a fan. I'll share it on air as well, but I'm, I'm not a fan just because you're on TV. Sure. Just because you're very entrepreneurial. Oh, thank mm. you so yeah, much. I just want to see if I was going to ask you just one or two questions around sure. your your history and if you were just a couple of myth busters. Please. Like, yeah, if, yeah. If part of, what were you part of? I want to go into your background. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, so good, good. good. <laughs> a little, little bit of background anyway for Jeff. All right. I just love your morning motivational kick oh, in the ass you guys every are the morning. Best. I I've come in here, I feel fantastic. I, yeah. I make my breakfast and I've got you yelling down the screen. Food for comfort, not for... Food for fuel, not comfort. That's oh, right. right. Sheena, get it right. Food for fuel, not comfort. <laughs> so my background. Yeah, we'll go in your background, but I'll go on air in a second or so. I'm just going to try and share this on, on my, you know, with everything about social media. Well, of course. But this is the back, this is like the back end of everything. Got it. So everyone yes. gets to see what's happening. So if we pick our noses or anything like that, right, we're on. usually me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got it, got it, yeah, for got sure. It. You ready to go then? Absolutely. Just give me um, two seconds. It's not such a nice day today. Uh, it's not the best, but that's okay. It's, uh, we know we're alive and it's yeah. a little bit fresh. Grateful for that. There's mm. the positive spin. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thought I'd wear the shorts just to be extra alive this morning <laughs> down here. <laughs> All right, ready to go, guys? Sure am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Weekend Wellness Show. This is Liam Zola, your host, and I'm with my awesome co-host, Sheena Alexandra, and our awesome, awesome guest, <laughs> Jeff Jowett, the motivational king, the body trim infomercial king, weight loss king. I'm sucking up to you now, Jeff. I'm only uh, sucking up to you. I'm so a fan. Good. Thank you, I'm a, guys. I'm a fan. I'm br- wanting to bring you on the show. I'm stoked you're on the show. Thank you. Sheena, you've done well. She's done well. How do you, go- how do you guys connect, first of all? Well, we came, uh, I jumped on a show down here called The Life Hack Show with my mate Greg Silla. Yeah, and that's where I met Sheena, the lovely Sheena. And lovely we, Sheena. Uh, hit it off. I was I was blown away at her, and and here I am again. Yeah. Well, I'm blown away with Jeff. I mean, every morning I didn't realize I was going to get an ass kicking every morning, but ah. I absolutely <laughs> love it. I really do, and I think you're so motivational, and what you say is so it resonates Thank so well you. with me. So it's not just about calories in, calories out. It's everything. It's a holistic view of your mindset. You know, of, of motivation, of time, of patience, it's everything, and you tie everything up beautifully, and I just... Oh, thanks so much. Look, you know, I'm 41 now, and a lot of, whenever I say that, people go, oh, you're only young, and I am, mm. but, gee, I'm a different bloke to when I was 31, and yeah. when I was 31, it was sort of, look at me, let's change the world, let's mm. buy the cars, and mm. I call it fool's gold, nothing wrong with having a nice car, but yeah. don't get me wrong, yeah. but... Uh, my, my my drivers are different now. What drives me is very different at 41. Having gone bust and started again and having had to really humble myself and it gives you so much more empathy and understanding for people. So yeah. I always loved coaching people but I never had massive pain myself. Yeah. So when you go through hard stuff and you come out the other side, your not only your gratitude but more so just your your empathy for people mm. uh, and what they're going through so whether it be an overweight person battling with binge eating mm. it's all pain avoidance strategies that we use as humans yeah and so i've definitely got a far greater level of understanding about that now and compassion yeah at 41 than i ever had in my 20s and 30s and i've been in fitness and health and whatnot forever yeah doing fitness centers and then weight loss brands and body trim and yeah. i love it and i yeah. love helping people but now it takes on a lot more now like i spend hours a day in my forums because i love it now mm. because i'm connecting and i you know i've battled the drink myself when mm. times got tough and connection kills addiction connection mm. with human beings that's a smart movie that's d- definitely right mate Where it's it's so special so you you're you've got a, a purpose is that what you've always had for the sure. same purpose Look, or has that changed no, no, weight loss and health 
But is it different to 30? It's a great to question. It's got a lot more depth to it now. Yeah. I made this bodgy iceberg the other day on the computer. I googled iceberg template. <laughs> <That's only laughs> anyway, the theory, the, the methodology is good. Yeah. The image is average. But the point is that <laughs> there's above the surface stuff, you know, food, walking, gym. And then there's below the surface stuff, toxic people, self-sabotage, mm-hmm. negative self-talk. Uh, affirmations, visualizations, all the stuff most people don't do. They don't do the deep work mm. to grow themselves, grow their thinking. So uh, as a young boy, I was the skinny kid at school and I got picked on a bit. I didn't like that. So I started going to the gym, you know, low self-esteem, built some muscles. And as a young boy, I know there's a lot more to self-esteem than building muscles, but as a young guy, you feel a bit better mm. yeah. when you're 16, right? And I wasn't getting picked on anymore and it was okay. So then I thought, right, this is great. I want to help other people with their bodies. Mm. So I went off and did a sports science degree at UNSW to, to then become a personal trainer to help other people. And that was born out of how I felt when I changed my body, so I thought I want to help other people do that. And then yeah. I got into personal training. I started vision personal training. That's what I was going to ask yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. That was the myth. Did you start vision yes, personal training? Yes, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. With Andrew Simmons, who's yeah. still the the founder and yeah. CEO. So yeah. Andrew and I were good mates. I was with, I, we, we started that in 99, August 99. Uh, and I got out in 2005. Mm-hmm took a year off and then started body trim. But we're yep. still great mates and, and I walk past a lot of the visions and very proud of, of what we started and Definitely. created together. Yeah. So where does that, how does success, like where did the success come from? Because you go, even though you've talked about how you've eaten humble pie in a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you've seemed to always come back and continue that success. Like to have a, uh, a, an Australian brand of vision yeah. and then have a year off and come back and do body trim yeah. and come back and then doing what you're doing yeah. now. How does that, where, where do the core methodologies come from? And can, um, how, how can we teach that to yeah. you? And teach someone who's 30 sure, right yeah. now. Yeah. 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 I don't Use want the cars the wisdom. All the wisdom. Look, um, I, I, that's very kind. You guys are lovely. Thank you. Um, but it's purpose. You got It's purpose driven work. So yeah. Rick Warren wrote a book called Purpose Driven Life. So I've like 100 million copies because we need purpose. Mm. Victor Frankl, Man's Search for Meaning. Yeah, I love that book. You know, like we crave it, we need it. So what happens is people embark out into the big bad world and unfortunately pretty quickly, fear-based, it's all fear-based, we know what that feels like. Got to make money, got to survive. Food and shelter, Maslow's hierarchy of mm-hmm. needs. Yeah. So all of a sudden purpose goes out the window, survival mode, make money, acquire assets, but you're not yeah. living your purpose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's what happens for 90% of people. They might have the big house and the flash car, but they're miserable. Mm-hmm. It is so common. So when, it, when I've kicked big goals, it's been 100% along with my purpose and values, i.e. vision PT, i.e. body trim. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I've failed, I've compromised that a little bit. I didn't okay. do. I didn't do anything dodgy. Yeah. But it was. It didn't light me up. It wasn't one hundred percent congruent. Yeah. With what I believed deep down. Vision PT. You know, I was a skinny kid. Wanted to be a trainer, help other people. We started doing weight loss challenges. I loved it. I lived for those mm-hmm. things. We've got hundreds and hundreds of people in these challenges. Life changing for me. I think I might have said this to you the other day, Sheena. I was talking about. I need to be doing pioneering work. Yeah. So I, I, I've never succeeded with a Me Too product. Yeah. So if there's a good business and you just copy it to make money, couldn't think of anything worse. Yeah, exactly. It's right. like root canal. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if I can do something that genuinely impacts people, like this new thing that we'll talk about, belly busters, I'm yeah. more passionate now about mindset. Mm. Yeah. Because in your, you, you, if you, you know, there's so many different diet plans. When I started body trimming in 07, mm. I thought everyone needed to eat paleo slash hunter-gatherer mm. diet, yeah. protein, and, and that's just simply not the case. There's not one diet that's better than all the others. Bottom line is, you've got to be in calorie deficit to lose weight. Yeah. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, mm. and and some work better for up some and others for others, and and that's how it works. But in my late twenties, early thirties, I was at, I, I was absolute. This is the only way, and it's funny now as an older bloke mm. because I'm not, you know, I'm not Father Time, and I'm not some, you know, I'm not Socrates or, yeah. some, <laughs> or some genius. But I've been around long enough mm. to see the bloody trends and patterns, yeah. right? Yeah. So you see the new thing blow up, and it's like everyone's like, "This is the only way." Yeah, mm. and it's going to no come around again. Yeah. Though. It's going to come around again. Come around I remember again. when I was just getting out of Vision PT, starting Body Trim, 
dietary ketosis mm. was a dirty word. Yeah. People said, no, it's dangerous, you can't yeah. do it. And it's like, well, it's not dangerous, and it's that's how that's one great way to lose weight. So anyway, but but fast forward ten years and, and it's become booming. a trend, a real mm. booming trend. Mm. And again, one of many effective ways for overweight people to lose weight. But the key to it, obviously you've got to be in calorie deficit. But getting back to, you know, how do you pick your mark mm. there's a, a great quote that says don't ask what the world needs ask what brings you to life yeah okay. it's what the world needs of people who've been brought to life i believe in energy mm. and it, it's, it's all about energy and the, your orbit and you attract the right people and opportunities when your energy is good mm. and you're aligned with your values when you're not uh, if, you're, if you're an idiot, you attract idiots. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you compromise your values, you attract people who've compromised your values. Yeah. If you're awesome, you attract awesome. Yeah. That's how it works. And Sheena and I connected. Mm. I'm not, this is not a uh, backhanded compliment, by the way, to yeah, myself. Yeah, yeah. Sheena and I connected, and we met and we connected yeah. because we were in a similar orbit, similar mm-hmm. energy. And, yeah, exactly and, right. and that's how it works, and you kind of, I'm really aware of that now. Yeah. And I compromised that at times in my past in business when... I thought it was a good opportunity, but oh, I don't know about this person, but okay, we'll go anyway, it never works. Right. Yeah. And even if it does, you're miserable. Yeah. You're miserable. And then what you do is you medicate. So yeah. it's, it's, it's literally a domino effect. If you compromise at the start with your values and your purpose and alignment, then in time, you start to really struggle with that. And then people will ultimately medicate with food, alcohol, drugs, mm-hmm. gambling, internet. That's how it works. It's an external feel good yeah. to medicate an internal pain when you're not so congruent with your values. Internal hollowness that it you is. might be feeling. You're trying to fill yourself up. And so many people are. Yeah. So many people. And it's a shame, isn't it, But when we're living in a society. That's why mental health uh, oh. is, is on the rise. Can right. I just say, with mental health as well, 300 years ago, we lived in villages, mm. right? Now, pretty sure there were no mobile phones. Yeah, pretty sure. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure. Yeah, but um, yeah. But what happened was there, there was obviously no social media. There was no mm. mobile phones. Nothing. And there was a village, and you lived in your village, and you had a little purpose in your village. Mm. And there's still African villages to this day that don't have a word for depression. Mm. Yeah. Okay. They still don't know of it. Yeah. Because comparison's the thief of joy, and what's happening is, and I'm guilty of it, if I'm not careful, I'm on the bloody phone, mm-hmm. someone's in Mykonos having the time of their life on Facebook. Yeah, exactly right. Mm-hmm. Well, well, they probably just had a blue and they, they hate yeah, their yeah, life, yeah, but yeah. on Facebook, they're having a blue, right? <laughs> and, yeah, right? That's, you know, they're probably having a massive stink with their partner. Yeah. <laughs> Smile, yay! Smile. And then they're punching on again. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of Earth's like, oh, look at them, look at me, I'm shit, they're good. Mm. And... Before you know it, depression, anxiety mm. is just through the roof. And a lot of it's, we're not built, our brains haven't evolved over the last 300 years, obviously, but mm. everything else has. Yeah. And that's, I'm bringing out this new thing, the Jowett method, and one, it's more, it's mindset. Mm. And, and in the first half hour of the day, no phone or internet. Last mm. half hour of the day, no phone or internet. Mm. Read a book for 10 minutes a day, mm. i.e., but not a Kindle, mm. a paper book. Yeah, because it's cathartic. Mm. Yeah, it's just you there in the moment with your book. Mm. But I've got ADD, so if yeah. I get on the bloody phone and start using Kindle, I've got twenty windows open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've read one paragraph, <laughs> and I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm neck deep in um, I don't know. You're buying, you're buying stuff on physics. eBay. The quantum physics. Yeah. I'll Google Elon Musk and see what he's doing. And then you're looking at your mate in Mykonos. Again. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, and then you look up to the screen, and a mate of mine looked at my computer the other day. He goes, "Mate, you got a few windows open." <laughs> That's just madness. Exactly you've got right. some, but if you just put the phone down like I've got two lovely little dogs when I walk my dogs and I say this to everyone like tips if you're lucky enough to have dogs walk them but no phone like I see all these people you know I live in Rushcutters Bay I walk down to the park and everyone's walking their dog on the phone and leave the phone at home mm-hmm. connect with your pet yeah. like animals are, are, are spiritual yes. beings like you've got to connect with these yeah. it's so special but the stuff that comes out of my mouth now it's funny if I heard me 10 years ago, I thought, this bloke's on drugs, is he a hippie, what is, is, what's all this fluffy stuff? This is how you live. Yeah. This is how it's, this is where happiness lives. Definitely. I was, I was so busy caught up in my early, late 20s, early 30s, oh, look at the Lamborghini, that bloke's killing it. Yeah. Who cares? Yeah. And if they are good, but who yeah. cares? That's not depth, there's nothing yeah. to that. Exactly like, right. Now you've got these, if I kicked a big goal again in business, mm. I'd buy a farm, I'd have sheep, 
I'd have chickens, I'd have about 10 dogs, I'd definitely have an alpaca. Yeah. My stepbrother's got an alpaca no called, way. called Kerry Packer. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, and I think <laughs> Kerry Packer Jr. Kerry Packer Jr. <laughs> but, and animals, like, I have this love for animals that I never had as a young boy mm. and young, young men. And so do you believe that the, the animals are more spiritual than we think? Absolutely. Yeah, okay, that uh, makes well, sense. Yeah, they're, 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 they're sentient beings. Like, they're not just... They're, like, animals can tell when you're struggling emotionally. Mm. Yeah. An, yeah. Animal, an animal, but most people, and the way they treat their animals, it's disgusting. Mm. It's disgusting. Mm. Like, it, 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 oh, it makes me, I get really emotional about it. It's so wrong. Mm. Like, my little dogs, if I'm, if I'm a bit stressed and I'm not showing it externally at all, they will know. Yeah, they know. They can, they can feel your metabolism. Yeah. And there's so much, they see things that we don't. They yeah. feel things that we don't. That's, yeah. that's just, I don't know whether it's physics or whatever it is, but that's just how animals, you know, especially dogs. Yeah. But even, you see some of these, you know, I even struggle these days eating Bacon. Actually, I don't eat bacon anymore because I look, they're so smart, the little piggies. I don't want to eat. <laughs> they're smart. They're smart. They're smart. And they're little, you know, they're not people, but they're little animals. Yeah, I, don't want to, right. I don't want to eat them anymore. Yeah. So I try and have a lot more, you know, no offence to fish, they're doing their best. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry out there, fish, but yeah. you're still copping off them. But uh, that's it. But, you know, I try and have a lot more fish and eggs yeah. these mm. days than, than slaughtering cows and and pigs and land and sheep and yeah. and, and whatnot. What about drinking the milk? No milk. Well, I don't. Um, as Schwarzenegger said, milk is for babies. Yeah, milk, <laughs> is, milk for is for babies. Milk is for babies. So a lot of people are, have some level of lactose intolerance. Yeah, mm. right. Absolutely. In fact, if I drink milk, boom. Pfft, yeah, like, same. Yeah, yeah. yeah and boom. same with uh, gluten. Mm. You know, so I don't. You know, wheat. Yeah. Um, I don't have a lot of that. So my, my carb sources, because I'm back into bodybuilding, so I'll have a lot more carbs. And mm. this is another thing. So, And I talk to this with all the, the guys I coach and in Belly Busters. Like carbs, carbs are not the enemy. It's all relative to your goal. Yeah. Mm. There's three macronutrients, carbs, proteins, fats. Mm. And all are good for different things. Yeah. And if someone wants to put on muscle, carbs are the most efficient fuel. Yeah. So I'll eat lots of oats and, and uh, basmati brown rice, for yeah. example. It's super cheap, but I don't have a weight loss goal. Mm. And if someone's got a lot of weight to lose, 30, 40, 50 kilos or more, they've developed some level of insulin resistance. And mm. when you lower carbs, starchy carbs, especially fruit, because of the fructose, the fruit sugar, you can restore insulin sensitivity. Yeah, okay. Again, so it's very different an eating plan for an overweight slash obese person mm. yeah. to an athlete. They're yeah. very, very different. Mm. And a lot of people will say, oh, but yeah, just eat high fat, but carbs are more efficient fuel for an athlete. Well, if, you, if, you, if you're training, you need carbohydrates as that uh, immediate energy you boost. You do, you do. And, and explosive movement, it helps with your explosive movements if you're in the weight room. And also the, the liver and muscle glycogen stores as well are, okay. are important. So that when, you, when carbs break down and are stored first in the liver and muscle, yeah. then if they're not all used, they're stored as fat. But a sedentary person, an overweight person, always more lean proteins and veggies, mm. and uh, an athlete and a bodybuilder. It's funny, because when I, I did a bodybuilding, my last comp was in 2012, in the middle of body trim. Okay. So I'd brainwashed myself yeah. professionally, yeah. thinking carbs were bad for everyone yeah. back then. So I, I dieted for this comp, mainly on a high protein, moderate fat diet, mm. and I didn't get the pump as much, and I didn't get my muscles full of glycogen, mm. and the prep into the comp was torture. Yeah. And I was doing Channel 7 Live every day, and I'm like, oh, I can't even see, I'm so fatigued. Yeah. And Because my body just had no fuel, I had no fat left on my body, and mm. I made it really hard for myself. But an obese person, perfect, mm. because, again, they need to be in calorie deficit. and. Mm. Uh, most people's metabolic rate, if they're quite overweight, is very slow. Because mm. a lot of people, when they start to put weight on, what happens is they'll, they'll starve themselves and binge, starve, binge, starve, binge. Yeah. Damage the met damages the metabolic rate because of the starvation response. When we don't eat for prolonged periods of time, the body thinks we're in famine, so it slows down. Yeah. Then we get really hungry and we eat lots. So it's it's a, it compounds. It's bad on the bad. Mm. Don't eat, eat too much. Don't eat, eat too much. Whereas that's why I always say small regular meals. Yeah. Are good, for, are best for everyone. It's better for digestion, but it also ramps up your metabolic rate. I just yeah. saw a post. Before speaking of social media, when I was outside, <laughs> go me, go me, walking the walk. Good on, good on. At least the dogs are here. Yeah, the dogs. Oh, I was going to 
to bring him. No, yeah. no, no, that's right. Thank you for saving me the issue. <laughs> but I saw a, a, a female physique competitor post, and she said, you know, I, I eat anywhere between five and seven meals a day. She's got a little girl, and it depends on, you know, her, her mum duties. Mm. But everybody who takes their body to an elite level eats between five and seven times a day. Every two to three hours, a meal, a snack, a meal, a snack. That's why three meals, three snacks. And a lot of people I used to play golf with, well, I still play golf with mates of mine, and, and um, one of them got onto intermittent fasting and he dropped about 15 kilo and he's like, oh, it's the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jeffro, Jeffro, <laughs> what do you think? And he's, he's bailing me up on the fourth green, mate. What do you tell me? I know you don't like it, but it's got to be good. Tell me. And I'm, I'm like, look, mate, here's how it works. Intermittent fasting means you don't eat for 16 hours a day, roughly, and you're, you've got a window to eat of eight, is what he told me. So therefore... Again, it's 90% calorie math, mm. 90%. You've got to be in deficit. Mm. So therefore, most people will be in calorie deficit if they only eat for eight hours a day. Exactly right. right. So we've got to just bring it back to that because we're always, we're conditioned, if you're anything like me, we're conditioned to find shortcuts mm. and the latest and greatest. So when something comes out and it sounds plausible and it's new and it's a breakthrough, well, I'm in. Yeah. But hang on, our biology hasn't changed for a very, very long mm. period of time. So there's really nothing new when it comes to how to lose weight, yeah. uh, build muscle, get fit. And, and it's the same sort of stuff. But people, have, I think people have got to get to threshold. Tony Robbins talks about getting to threshold where you're then, you're like, you know what, gift of desperation, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand, uh, I'm going to listen to you now. And the, the thing is with, with people, when they get to that point, then they become teachable. And, mm. and, and a, lot of, a lot of people, when they, before then, they're always trying the latest and the greatest and, and, and all that sort of jazz. But at the end of the day, it's calorie math, in and out, and, and there's some people respond to different macronutrient profiles better because if people who eat a lot of carbs, they generally crave carbs. Yeah. So that's why a higher carb diet's a problem. It spikes insulin, lollies, sugars, all yeah. those sorts of things. People on keto don't have the cravings, mm. which is a really good thing. I know you do keto, mm. no cravings. Yeah. No cravings, no binge eating. Yeah. But again, a lot of it is still mindset. So, yeah. so I'm going to go live tomorrow night with this, um, this new thing. I'm doing belly busters and I'm yeah. going to say to them, and all my programs now are live, thanks to Facebook, mm. I do it in a private group. Yeah. Body Trimmers DVDs. Yeah. Now it's a two-way conversation. I yeah, love exactly. that I can yeah. connect with Earth yeah. whenever I want. Yeah. And thanks to Mark Zuckerberg and yeah. Co, <laughs> I don't need 50 IT gurus on the payroll. Yeah. <laughs> Me and my two dogs, William and Harry, and we do, we do our best as exactly long as we've got right. Wi-Fi. And, yeah. right, and the thing is, I'm going to say to these guys tomorrow night, this isn't a diet. This is a mindset and lifestyle mm -hmm. program for weight loss. Mm -hmm. So if you're waiting, I'm gonna to say to them, if you're waiting for a detailed food list, recipes, mm -hmm. everything, I will refund your money now. Because yeah. that's not how you lose weight. Because I, okay, a million people bought body trim and I guarantee you 800 plus thousand put the weight back on because we didn't yeah. address mindset. Yeah. All, I did, all I did was above the surface food, walking, gym. Yeah. And it works while you work it, but then you, then you don't. Exactly because right external feel goods medicate internal pain and then you're, you're turning to food as a crutch. And the thing is, because I'm really transparent and vulnerable with my battles with alcohol over the years when I've struggled, mm. these wonderful people in my teams and groups, they share. Mm. And, and I find if you drop your guard and you're transparent, other people are as well. And, that, and that's connection. Yeah. yeah. I can't even, that's that's a drug. Like that's mm. my, connection's my drug of choice now. It's yeah. the best. Like Russell Brand talks about a lot of this stuff. He's battled addiction. Obviously, Russell Brand, he's just got a new book out called Recovery. It's really yeah. good. And mm. it's all the same. It's food, alcohol, they're, they're all the same external feel goods. And, and people, food, everyone. Food, alcohol, drugs. Food, alcohol, drugs, gambling, mm. social media, Netflix. Yeah. If yeah. you're binging Netflix, mm. you, you're escaping. Yeah. I, you know, escape, eject. Yeah. I, too much pain, oh, I can't, oh, I need a break, eject, eject, mm. eject. And the thing I try and teach people, the more that you can sit with it, and get uncomfortable, that's when the growth happens. Yeah. But you've got to acquire some skills, i.e. some mindfulness stuff, breathing exercises, meditation, mm. these sorts of things. Again, when I was 30, I'd be like, ah, oh, I haven't got time, yeah. mate. And that's why your life imploded. Exactly yes. right. Because you didn't make the time for that. You thought, mm. oh, I'm so busy, look at me, I'm going good. Luck. You know, half a bottle of scotch a night, mm. probably not the answer yeah. at that point in time. And I'm not Robinson Crusoe, mm. most people. Is it stress though? Is that what brings on these things as well? For sure, like but I, I say to people, do you do medicate or celebrate? Mm. 
Yeah. Right. So these external feel goods, they start out as a coping mechanism, mm. and then, like the first time you have a drink of alcohol, you're like, oh, how good's that? Oh yeah. my, oh my OCD's gone. Oh yeah. my anxiety's yeah, yeah, gone. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Yeah. It's just Jeffro at his best. Yeah. Maybe early on, mm. but you know, it starts out as that, and then it becomes habit forming. Yeah. And habit forming, you know, with the bad things, you know, can absolutely destroy your life. Habits like a pair of invisible handcuffs, and before you know it, you you, you snook it, mm. yeah. And it takes over your life. So me, for me, it was alcohol. For overweight pe- people, it's food. They medicate with food because food, you know, often I speak to a lot of women, and they've had some very, 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 very average ex-husbands mm. who've um, unfortunately a lot of. So I won't say a lot of men. That's that's unfair. But yeah, you know, yeah. I know. There's I know of. of room. Yeah, sorry. There's two of us in the room. But I know of a lot of. <laughs> These stories where the, the husband would say you're fat, you're ugly. Oh, that's, that's oh, mate, there's so much of it. It sickens me. Really? It sickens me. I hear it all the time. And these women turn to food mm. because food's their comfort. Yeah. It's their safe place, and, and and they can rely on it. Why is it though that women I find that I don't mean to be generalisation. I feel like a lot more women state that I feel fat or I am fat. Mm. Is it uh, is it a where where like where does that come from? Well, look, like, there's like studies on it. Is there studies on yeah, it? there's actually? studies on it. So you'll get a bloke. It's, I love this one. They've done studies. So you get an average looking bloke and he thinks he looks really good. Yeah. And you'll get an amazing looking woman who thinks she looks average. Yeah. They've done countless studies on this. It's a bit of body dysmorphia. Why do women have it more? I don't know the answer to that. I'm sure there's a biochemistry or some sort of reason for it. But yeah, a woman who's in perfect shape and, you know, pretty much uh, uh, all, all my female friends, my wonderful uh, ex fiance we're still great mates. Mm. You know, she was a, a world champion in, in fitness competitions and really? still, um, st- yeah, did incredibly well, won some, uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Sports Festival overseas and did yeah. amazing stuff. And um, still at times thought she didn't look that good. Mm. But again, this sounds terrible, I don't wanna bash men, because I'll probably get bashed when I go outside. <laughs> but a lot of it's, we used to talk about this, a lot of it's old tapes. So if you're dating a bloke or with a bloke who tells you you never look good because it's the bloke's vulnerability, yeah. the bloke's insecurity, self-esteem issues, so they transfer. Yeah. They transfer onto the it's other that person. energy it's, you're talking about. The vibe, yeah, and vibration we were talking about before. It, it's, it's that. And also, if someone is not comfortable with themselves, a lot of the time, then it's their own self-esteem and jealousy and fear-based stuff that they put mm. onto the other person. Don't yeah. lose any more weight. Like, what I know heaps of times when... Uh, you know, someone loses heaps of weight and they're, and they're overweight mates are like, oh, have you got an eating disorder? Don't lose any more weight. Mm. Gee whiz, oh, I'm worried about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, calm down. Like, yeah. what's happening is that, look, I'm really passionate about this because I've seen it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We had a million people with body trim. I've spoken to tens of thousands of people. I know what happened. I understand the mindset, the psychology, yeah. the human interaction, the behavior. And what a lot of people do, <clears throat> their mate starts losing weight and then all of a sudden the spotlight's on them. Mm. And they're like, oh, I'm, I'm the fat one now in the group, mm. right? Yeah. And they don't like that. Yeah. So they want their slim friend to be fat again, mm. so they feel mm. okay. Is this a worldwide thing, or is this tall poppy syndrome that we've been discussing? Oh, on the show Australian before? tall poppy syndrome. How yeah, good is it? Don't be too successful here. No, nah, no, nah, not at all. Uh, but I don't like it. That's just. Do you reckon that needs to change then, or what? Well, it's a. It's is a, it an Aussie thing? Mm. Is it. Because it, in America, is it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't happen. It doesn't that, anyways, it's a long. <laughs> it, that's a, long, a conversation for a different. I want to know. <laughs> I've been dying to ask him a question, and you just oh. totally like controlled the whole floor. I didn't even mean to. I'm just so <laughs> impressed. I'm just so <laughs> I'm just fan. Like, this is the first time that this has happened. Like, and fan and uh, Fan and Facebook. Can I ask one question, question and then you can ask? I got no. You're all right. No. Yeah, you're no worries. <laughs> okay, I just want to go back to um, my experience with the keto diet, yes. and um, I've experienced um, obviously the motivation that you have to take or you have to have to start a diet. I've done that so many times, but what I haven't done because this is the first diet that's actually worked with me. I've had to become patient with the weight loss, which is something I've never experienced. How much time it takes to actually lose the weight. Yes. So can we just talk a little bit about? The motivation, oh. and the and then and then keeping in it once you've you, you started. Excellent question, yet, Shana. You know? So I've got another little Jeffism called the motivation gap. Mm. The motivation gap, I say, it takes four days. Well, not takes four days. Normally, you're motivated for about four days, three or four days. Mm. You make a change, bang, 
and then the motivation's gone. Studies show it takes at least 30 to develop a habit, so it's the 26 in the middle. Yeah. That's the motivation gap, and that's why people struggle losing weight, changing their life, giving up the drink, the smokes, mm -hmm. whatever it is, because they don't stick at it long enough to bridge the motivation gap. Four days into 30, 26 in the middle, mm -hmm. and that's where I believe connection and tribes come in. Mm -hmm. Because you're gonna, it's hard at the start, because it's not a habit. Mm -hmm. You know, I made a deliberate decision three months ago to read every day at least half an hour. It was, it was like pulling teeth at the start. Mm -hmm. It's like, how much longer have I got to do this for? <laughs> it's terrible. We'll throw a bit of ADD in the mix and it's not like, oh, let's, let's not kid ourselves. But, and then, you know, audio books and whatnot, but I'm doing, I'm multitasking seven things. That's not really slowing me down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why now, so for people trying to lose weight, think of it like this, if it took you 10 years to put the weight on, then one year to get it off is a good deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's how it works. Yeah. 10 years to put it on, let's say you, you put 50 kilo on, you'll get it off in a year. Mm. That, you, you know, let's say it took you a couple of years to put 20 on, you'll get mm. it off in, in six months. Mm. So that's a pretty bloody good deal, right? Yeah. You did a good job on yourself for 10 years, now we can get it off in one. <laughs> yeah. that, that's how it works. And the, the motivation, like, the thing is, is so many people start, stops, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down. That's, that's mm. what we do. That's what I've done many, many times. And you get to a stage of threshold in your life where you go, enough. I give in. I'm going to do the work, the deep work to change my life. Like, mm. you know, I've started some great companies, but I've had some really big blunders, and I don't want to keep going through life like that. And I have to do mm. the deep work, stay humble, mm. feed on the ground, yep. daily habits, rituals, routines, read books. It's the boring stuff, right? Yep. So people listening, oh, bloody hell, don't tell me I've got to do all that. If you want to have a great life, you do. Yep. There's no shortcut. Mm. And I see train smashers all the time people's lives who look good neck neck minute rehab neck minute, <laughs> neck minute bankrupt yeah neck minute divorce because they don't do the deep mm. work and i see young blokes you know in their early 30s making a lot of money and it's they are literally sprinting towards the edge of a cliff yeah on that frequency yeah on that frequency it is just it's a time bomb if yeah. you don't do the deep work the universe will humble you in a man and a man who's in it who's just turned 30 What's your advice to me then? Stay well, humble. Stay humble, but also really commit to growing yourself. I mm. always say grow your thinking, you'll grow your life. Mm. And But I didn't, you know, I was lucky. I had a couple of big winners in business. Mm. And, you know, oh, you know, oh yeah, I know I should read, but I'm, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Mate, you might be good at ideas and, and creative, but you haven't done the work on yourself, mm. champ. Yeah. And then addiction takes over and a whole lot of stuff because you haven't done that. Your feet aren't on the ground. So are you reading books? Are you meditating? Again, boring stuff. Slows the brain down. And it, But if you don't do that, sooner or later, train smash. Yeah. Mm. And people have a lot of success young. Sooner or later, if they're doing the work, amazing. If they don't, train smash. 100% predictable. Mm. And it's, it's the iceberg. Again, for weight loss, food, walking, gym, above the surface, below, mm. there's a truckload of stuff. Like yeah. the things that I'm going to talk about with them tomorrow night, mm. it's part of the Jowett method. For 10 minutes a day, you have to read a book. Mm. What's that? And, but it's not a diet book. Mm. It's whatever you want, but it's got to be a paperback book because, again, calm. And how are you going to hold them account? Can you hold them accountable? Are you going to talk about it? How is well, that going to work? I've got them in groups. I've got a private Facebook group, and it's really active. And because I think everything, if you are the real deal, and people know, it's like dog smell fear. Mm. I've had people, so many people on Facebook go, mate, this is awesome, I believe you now. Mm. When you did body trim, I didn't really believe you, you were a bit of a salesman. I've heard mm. that a lot. Mm. And mate, you know what, they're not wrong. Mm. They're not wrong. I, um, I got caught up in, in my own BS, mm. if you will. Mm. And uh, yeah, and a lot of people do that. I'm incredibly grateful that I came out the other side of it. Um, you know, and, and um, the universe, I always say, it gives you a little tap poke. Mm. little course correction mm. so yeah. if you're going to, if you're listening to this right now and you're having a tough time it may be Oprah Winfrey talks a lot about this it may be the universe just going hang on you're not meant to be here mm. course correct mm -hmm. I was just I was in the cab on the way down here because I lost my license a few months ago oh, so I'm not perfect far yeah. from it nowhere <laughs> near it you and Sheena share, share something in common. Yeah, yeah, look, but definitely not DUI. Just a few little sneaky red light cameras yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. Just a few they get orange. you. They're all over the place. Oh, all over the like, like, Orange is the new green. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, a little, little bit of orange never hurt anyone. <laughs> orange is the new green. Orange is the new green <laughs> until it's red, and red's still red. It's still red. Red's still red. <laughs> still red. Yeah. Studies show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was I saying? But, but um, yeah, you do that deeper work 
on yourself mm. and, and it, it sets you in, in good stead. I did a meditation course years ago, but now you've got Headspace, Calm, you've got all mm. these apps that are really good. Even breathing exercises. Like, But I look back at it. My mum died at 54 cancer, oh. bowel, liver, lung. She had anxiety. Or mm. She was an anxious person, mm. right? So I'm an anxious person. When I'm connected with people and whatnot, I'm not anxious. Mm. By myself. Anxious. Mate, my I head. I have a similarity with me, actually. Mm. Oh, this thing. Mm. It's just seven goes. million miles an hour. Mm. TikTok. And, you know, you've got to do option A, take meds, which I don't want to do. Mm. I tried. I didn't like them. Mm. Option B, do the bloody work, mm. mate. Do the work on yourself. And the work is not... Oh, just give us a uh, Peroni, thanks. That's yeah. not doing the work. Mm. That's a band aid. Yeah. And I know most people, and most people are medicating with something every day. And I was, I was in the ca- car on the way down the cab, and I thought about that because I was talking to someone about. I was talking with the cab driver. Oh, really? like, That's what was happening. Yeah, me and the cabbie, <laughs> we hit it off. It was great. We talked because everyone was at the races today and all down in Melbourne, and, and just the fact that. The vast majority of people are, you know, are medicating most days with something. And I got to a stage in my life where I want to live at a higher level. I want to play a bigger game. Mm. And I believe there's a lot more. I believe there's a lot more to this world than just what we see. I'm not a religious person. I'm not into man-made religion. There's nothing. No offence if you are. Mm. But I'm a spiritual person. I believe we're all connected. Mm. If you believe science, the universe started the size of a pea. Yeah. So and it grew out from there. Mm. So pure science tells us we're all connected, mm. and but we, we're living in disconnected times. Mm. And when you when you take the time to connect with with people, and I try and do that more and more these days, a lot of the worry and angst goes away. But when you're just when you're just doing it yourself, and you're just sort of in fight or flight mode the whole time, it's just a yucky way to live. And even yeah. if you do make a ton of cash, you're still miserable. And mm. as I said, Mum died at fifty four bowel cancer, bowel, liver, lung, and I believe a huge catalyst for that was her anxiety mm. and untreated and didn't mm. do the, the deep work, because back then no one was meditating or talking about this yeah. sort of stuff, and she had a, you know OCD traits like I do and mm. all those sorts of things, and you just got to commit to doing the work on yourself and you've got to be, a, you got to be honest with yourself mm. I, I go to the bookstore on Sundays with, like, fair dinkum, I'm 41 going on 95 <laughs> like, like, people go, What's, what are your plans tonight? Well, I'm going to go home I'm going to walk the dogs, and then I'm going to read. Mm. They're like, oh, cool. Like, <laughs> that's a good night. Like, I just, I've partied enough of 20 lifetimes. Yeah. There's no interest in that anymore, right? Yeah. So, But I go to the bookstores on Sundays at Dimmick's in the city, and I sit in the cafe, and I, I have a cup of coffee, and, I, and I, you know, I bought a book on anxiety the other day because I want to work on some of those things. And... Just and I look at things, high performance habits of people, daily mm. rituals to grow, mm. to grow my thinking because neuroplast- neuroplasticity tells us we can change mm. our brain. Yeah. We're not stuck with this rusty old bucket of bolts anymore. Yeah. We can tweak it, <laughs> yeah. but we have to do the work. The neural pathways we can shift them, change them, strengthen them mm. if we do that deep work. And for me, at forty, I'm halfway. You know, mate, maybe I'll get you know, hopefully I'll live to a hundred. That'd yeah. be nice. Raise the get- back. In yeah, the letter from King George, I'd love King it. George from the that best, day. yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, for everyone listening, and you know, at the end of the day, we don't know how long we've got. Mm. And I just want to play a bigger game. And, and I know if I'm doing something, if I'm doing purposeful work, and everyone has got great purposeful work in them. Everyone's got giftedness. Everyone's got greatness in them. But you've got to be a bit bold. You've got to really take the time to think what really lights me up. And when I talk to people about this, they've all got something, mm. but they're paralysed by fear, mm. fear of rejection, fear of loss. Fear of failure. So many people are paralysed by the fear of failure. I've failed more than just about anyone I know, mm. other than Colonel Sanders. <laughs> he had a lot, and I'm pretty sure it worked out for the Colonel. Yeah, Colonel. He probably didn't do much for the obesity. <laughs> Good on you. But, but he didn't know about it back then. He was just doing his best. We were all right back then. But he did said he had that many fair income. He failed that much. If you Google Colonel Sanders yeah. on YouTube... He didn't succeed until he was like 60, mate, is that right? correct. Is that you right? Good knowledge, yeah, yeah. Early 60s, he went bust a few times. Like, it was horrific. But I've had... I've been lucky about quite a few winners and then a few failures. Yeah. He had no winners yeah, until he's yeah. 60. Wow. I would have tapped out. I'd yeah. be like, I've, I've failed 30 consecutive. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. Oh, Centrelink. Oh, Centrelink. Centrelink. <laughs> Please come at me. The Colonel, don't worry about Centrelink. He was just powering, come yeah. up with his herbs and spices. <laughs> and off he went. Yeah. And, and But that's that's the thing. And But... As we get older, we realise it's not infinite. We've got a, a finite period of time here. I want to do something special. Mm. I, I 
I, I believe that most people live in a level, they've all got a level of pain that they're living with. And I think the more we connect people with, with the same goals, i.e. groups for weight loss, mm. that's why Weight Watchers has been so successful, multi-generational business, mm. meetings. Yeah. Yes. Meetings, that connection of people, connection. you know, because of my drinking, you know, once a week I'll go to AA, check in, meet people, connect, and I have no desire to drink anymore, but mm. me being there and sharing helps the newcomer. Yeah. So that's why I go. Someone said, why do you still go? And I go, because it helps the newcomer. Yeah, I get and they that. hear what I've got to say and it gives them hope when they're like two days sober yeah. in the horrors. Yeah. I mean, mate, it gets better. Mm. It gets better, you know. So that's that's why I go. Mm. But it's purposeful. Yeah. And purposeful work doesn't have to just be what you do for a living. Yeah. Right, that's really important. Can you sum up what your words are and your purpose? And yeah. then talk about belly busters as oh, well. Because belly yeah, busters yeah. starts tomorrow. Well, that's where we're going to go. Yeah, on yeah, that, yeah. Definitely. Cool. I want to know purpose. I'd say um, go to belly busters. I'd say I haven't thought about this, but you want to put me on the spot. Oh, I'd okay. say empower and educate people to be their best self. Mm. That's really what it comes in. Because I'm more about. I'm all about mindset now. Because I've had all my own battles. I didn't do the deep work on me, so I struggled. And and that's because of my own battles. It's given me the drive. That's my purpose. Yeah. I, I'm not. I don't coach. Bodybuilders, I've got no interest in that. Mm. Taking them from 10% to 4% doesn't interest me. Yeah. Right? That's a superficial goal. I'm not interested yeah. in that. I'm interested in the deep stuff. The mm. body's just a byproduct of the mind yeah. and changing that. So, obviously, the overweight population I love mm. because there's a flow on effect in their other areas of their life. So, empower and educate people to be their best, I'd say, would be. Uh, maybe yeah, a bit of a mantra for me. Yep. What was the next one? Oh, belly busters. Belly busters. Let's do this. Belly busters. Belly busters. Well, look, it was a name I picked out of my backside. Love it. But Wait, is you. This a no, hold on a second. Is this an infomercial right now? No, no, no. no it's not. Oh, I can't do no. Come on, man. <laughs> Protein bars, cookies, bites, and more. <laughs> Call now. One three hundred seven zero seven. Make the change today. <laughs> yes. Lose five kilos in seven oh, days. It's awesome. free. <laughs> That's what's <laughs> free. Yeah, this is, honestly, thank you so much. Oh, that was a little bit of old school old Aussie school. Jeff. Yes, the, 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 as my mates call me, steak knives. That's steak awesome. Knives, so, no more right. infomercials. Let's go belly busters. Let's okay, go belly busters. deep stuff. Deep stuff. So, belly busters is the Jowett method, and it's a new thing that starts tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, if people are interested, they can just go jeffjowett.com slash lose belly fat. Mm -hmm. Check that out. But this is all to do, it's mindset and lifestyle for weight loss. Mm -hmm. This is not a new radical diet. In fact, there's going to be a few different ways people can eat. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give them those options. It's not a generic blueprint for weight loss. It's all about the self-sabotage, limiting beliefs, stories mm -hmm. we tell ourselves, getting toxic people out of our lives, addictions. Overweight people have food addictions, all of them. All of them. I've spoken to tens of thousands of people. All of them have because we're medicating. And these lovely men and women in this group are so transparent with me. They're battling alcohol or, uh, like me because I've shared. I'm not some, I'm awesome. No, I'm not awesome. I am battling most days like all of us. And that's, what, that's why I love helping people so much. Everyone's got a battle we don't know about. Yeah. The supermodel. She probably thinks she's fat and ugly. Yeah. Like, we've all got stuff. But as a young bloke, I didn't realise that. Mm. I looked at people that I thought were crushing it. they got stuff. Yeah. We've yeah. all got stuff. And that's why I love these programs that I'm putting together now. And I made it, I wanted to make it really cheap because I didn't want to come into a, I wanted to earn people's trust again. Mm. You know, I'd had a couple of things that didn't go the best. Mm. So I thought, right, I'm going back to basics. I'm going to get amazing life-changing results for a bucket load of people mm. at the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! There we go. He's a poet. He's a poet. This bloke. Um, That's, this is why I love you. This is, is you? I get this every uh, morning, my right? Best work, my best work, my one-liners are never planned. It's just, it's just madness. Sometimes they come out good. Yeah. That's right. But, yeah, it, it, it help a bucket load of people change their life. Th they'll, they'll tell the story. They'll tell their mates. And all, all I want to do for the next 12... 12 months, couple of years, is just make a humble living, mm -hmm. helping people. And it'll grow from there because I've made a lot of cash, lost a lot of cash. I'm not going to be driven by it anymore. I want to do purposeful work. I've got, that's why you're, you're like you give a big goal again, there'll be no fancy watch, no fancy car, because I'm worried if I dip my toe in that way of thinking, mm. down the addiction. rabbit hole. That's, that's an addiction. That's addiction. It's an addiction Absolutely. again, external feel good. Mm. If you're struggling and you go buy a Ferrari mm. for a week, you feel on top of the world. Yeah. It's it's a band-aid at best. Yeah. You've got to do the deep work. There's a great book called Search Inside Yourself. I haven't heard of that one. What's one of the um <clears throat> the early Google programmers, I think Chade Meng Tang, I think his name is Search Inside Yourself. 
it's mindfulness based mm. but that's what it comes down to we're looking at these external oh I feel bad I buy a new surfboard oh, I feel bad I buy a car oh I'll go retail therapy yeah. retail therapy is an addiction yeah. I haven't bought any new clothes for well over mm. a year I've got mm. so many like I'm, in case you missed it, it's radio, so you can't see my bodgy head. I'm about five foot tall, and I've got a very average head. I'm not going to be a model anytime soon. My clothes, I don't need the latest clothes. Mm. I don't need to be bowling into Armani to buy the latest suit. Mm. Unnecessary. Mm. I'd rather, as I said, rather buy another dog or yeah. something. I'd seriously, be, I don't know, it just, you've got to just do the deep stuff. You're not going yeah. to get it with clothes and cars and all yeah. that jazz. It, it's fool's gold. Yeah. Oh, mate, it's been an absolute pleasure oh. to sit down and chat with Jeff Jarrett. This is unbelievable. I mean, I actually, actually been, been been humbling sitting down and oh, chatting to you. See you. the other side. Yeah. Because yeah, you see it on, on TV where you yeah. come from, but you see what, what's actually happening to, for you to share as well. Thanks. You're very different to that yeah. bloke. That bloke, he's a distant memory. He, he, uh, he's a bloke who got caught up in, you know, in, in his own bravado yeah. for a period of time. And a lot of us do. Mm. It was always... Bit like Darth Vader, there was always good in him. He just had to, you know, I lost my way a little bit yeah. with trying to keep up with the Joneses. Don't worry about the Joneses, no yeah. one cares. Do your own thing, run your own race, be awesome, mm. and take the time to just. If you've got animals, if you've got, if you're lucky enough to have pets, take them for a walk and love them yeah. without being on your phone. Like, yeah. I know my dog, my, one of my dogs, he'll look at me and it's like. Get off your phone, champ. Yeah, he's like, come walk mate. mate. <laughs> yeah, and, and oh, they just unconditional love. Yeah. Like anyone who's lucky enough to have an animal like that doesn't, oh, doesn't get any better than that. And we were just sitting at me and my girlfriend Emily was sitting in the cafe next door, and we had our little puppy. She's an Australian Shepherd. Yeah. And Emily left to go grab the coffees inside, and she was like, "Where's mummy? Yes. Like, Where's mummy?" And come back, and it's like she hasn't seen her for Aww. years. Yeah. How cute is she? I love her. And, yeah. Yeah, You're right, though. Spiritual animals. They are. Mm. Yeah, well, lovely to be on the show. Yes. Been an so privilege. Just as a closing, Belly Busters, yes. you're targeting everybody or just here in Sydney? Can they be in another I'm targeting country? Earth in time. Earth, yeah, so Earth. they can be from America. Surrounding or... planets in a few oh. years, but just Earth, <laughs> just Earth for the minute. You know. Excellent. You know, you look, I, um, I'm lucky. I, got with my, I do a morning show as well. It's free. It's free. Call mm. now. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. <laughs> just kidding. Morning show. It's on at 6.30 a.m. Jeff Jowett's. And it's my Motivation Weight Loss Life Show. It's about 10, 20 minutes each morning. Just grab a couple of minutes. It's like a strong cup of coffee mm. for you. Yeah, Wooshka. Wooshka. Struggling to get out of bed. Yeah. Bang, make that your alarm. <laughs> <laughs> G'day, guys. Tuesday morning. Hope you're well. Yeah. Rip in. <laughs> Thank you so much for your time, Jen. Thank you very much. Should we get Messiah on and get and, and have her um, be introduced to you? Oh, please. Yeah. please. Fantastic. Fantastic. The sexologist. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, this is a, this is unbelievable. One of one of the best shows we brought. We had to bring her back on. Perfect. Yeah. Glad to, to be here. She, she is. is. Part of it. Here she is. Messiah is back. Hi, meet, everyone. Meet Jeff Jow. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Nice, nice to meet you. you. The belly buster's king the and now busters. beats the sexologist. How can wow, you? <laughs> wow, we worlds collide. We're Here worlds we are. Collide. <laughs> so we're going to bring the Asaya on? Yeah, we're going to bring Asaya on. We're going to say bye to Jeff. All right, I'm gone. Okay, very good. Nice to meet you. See you later. Thank you so much for your Very kind so, words. Thank, thank you. you so much. Are we going to just keep rolling? Yeah, we're going to roll. Oh, it's on. Yeah. Keep rolling. Oh, that's it's it. It's lovely to thank chat with so you. Much. Mm-hmm. Thank, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. No songs. No songs. We're just going to continue the journey. Hello, Asaya. What's happening? Oh, look, just enjoying another beautiful day in Bondi. Thanks for having me. Back. No, no it's, a, it's an absolute privilege to have you back. Did you want some he- headphones? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you want the headphones on? on? There you go. The whole, let's the get you in the road team. I've got to plug these in. So you, while I plug these in, Shane, do you have any questions for Asaya? Uh, no, I'm actually going to plug this in because I feel like we're going to be running out of battery. Oh, okay, Actually, cool. I can hear so, you guys without. Without it. Yeah, oh, fair yeah. enough. Okay, cool. So what's been happening, Asaya? Oh, you know. Just um, uh, seeing clients, yep. uh, working on some interesting new articles. Yeah, what are uh, these articles? Uh, so I've been writing about orgasm, I've been writing about desire, I've been writing about intimacy. Yep. I've yeah. run some uh, workshops on Tantra recently. Mm. Mm. See, my friends listen to the show when you're on. And it was a different direction where I thought it was going when, when I said, when they said, The Sexologist was our favourite show. And I go, Here we go. Why was it the favourite show? Why was it the favourite? And they just said, because she just, what I mentioned before yes. with Sheena, she's just so open and honest about a taboo subject. Right. And that was entertaining. And it made, made, made light hearted. Like, it's, just, it's open and honest. It's good. Good yeah. to have you back. Uh, thank Let's you. Let's see guys. if we can and have another friends for. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you make it really comfortable too. You don't make it taboo, you make it 
Yeah, just like a topic that needs to be discussed. Needs to be discussed. Exactly. Needs to be discussed. Definitely needs and, to be discussed. And you know, it's, sex is like so many different things in life. Yeah. You know, we all we all do it. We mm. all eat. We all breathe. Like, why not kind of bring that kind of relaxation to it as well? Exactly right. So, what are the problems that we reckon we're facing in the uh, sex world? I mean, we're using that as a subject. Or use that yeah, as a subject? Yeah. yeah. So, you know what? One of the things I thought we might talk about today is orgasm and desire. Yeah. Um, because they're the things that come up in my work a lot, and you know, we can't talk about orgasm too much, right? Like every, everyone wants to know about orgasms. Mm. Everyone wants to know how they can have better sex. So Definitely. I thought uh, we could bring in some discussion around Okay, that. let's go. All right. How okay. are we going to start so, this So I want to ask you a question. Oh, no. Around. No, 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 no questions. Yeah. Okay, go. So, so how do you know when a woman's had an orgasm? I wouldn't have a clue. <laughs> if I'm going to be honest with you, I wouldn't have a clue. Yeah. Be, it, yeah, I was going to say something really wrong. I was going to say unless we have to say something, but that would be horrible. <laughs> You're my sister. <laughs> I know. You're, you're like my sister. That's it. that's incest. Go on. No, but I, look, how do I know? I feel as though that I would know, but obviously not. I, I don't know. Like, because the reason why I'm saying it that way is because so many times, I, you know, I'm like, yeah, she's had an orgasm, definitely. But then, you know, women come out and say things like, yeah, that wasn't an orgasm, buddy. In TV senses, not necessarily in my circumstance. So then it makes me question whether I've actually given women orgasms. Do you ever ask her? Yeah. Oh yeah. She's right, standing right there. This is getting really embarrassing now. She's standing right there. <laughs> oh, she's waving she's to waving us. She's waving to us right now. That's what <laughs> <laughs> she wants you to know. She's listening. Yes. <laughs> Had, oh, oh wait, wait. she's sitting if outside. I she knew what we were talking about. Yeah, I know. Don't, don't. No, I'm not going to say anything bad. I promise. <laughs> no, I said, no, well, look, have I asked? Yeah, I've asked her. I've asked. I've asked um, other girls as well. Yeah. yeah. They say yes, but do I believe them? Yeah, I know. I'm not it's, sure. It's a tough one, right? It is so a tough one. Men are twice as likely to orgasm during sex than women. I thought it'd be like ten times more likely. <laughs> <laughs> but those, those estimates could be conservative. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so 30% of women actually struggle to reach orgasm mm. on a regular basis, and 1 in 10 women have never had an orgasm at all. Why? Why? Such a good question. Why? Such and how can we solve this? Yes. I love, see, I love where you're going with yeah, this, Yeah, this Liam. is good. So target the first question first. Why? Why? Okay, lots of different reasons, and the reasons will kind of lead into what mm -hmm. we do about it. So I think women in general are, are more self-conscious around sex than men. You know, we're kind of held to different sexual standards mm. than, than men. We're not taught really that it's okay to enjoy ourselves as much as men. And I think we don't quite understand the way women's bodies work sexually mm. quite as well, you know, as, as men's, for example. So a lot of the sexual research was done around men because the researchers literally found women were like too complicated. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> that makes so sense. Like, <laughs> let's just go with man, let's keep the results. Like, really, really it's quite simple. Quite simple. We're very simple creatures, aren't we? <laughs> so I think like a lack of education is, is one of the things as well. A really key w reason that women don't orgasm as much as men is because we're not spending long enough in foreplay. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, and, and that kind of leads into one of the things that we can do to help women increase the chance of having an orgasm, mm. which is to spend more time in foreplay. Yeah. So, if you were to kind of take a guess at how often, uh, I mean, how long people should spend in foreplay yeah. before kind of going to penetration, well, I, don't, I don't know, what's, what's your guess, guys? I'm putting you on the spot. Putting me on, I like this, this is good <laughs> shit. We just, it's really, it's we're, we're just said a sire doesn't make things uncomfortable. Now I'll just take that back. <laughs> This I'll is our say, second okay. meeting. Is our I second think meeting. Yeah, now we go, we go a little deeper, we'll go a right? Little deeper. I would say uh, two hours. Foreplay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Two okay. hours foreplay. Oh, this can be That's really interesting. Wow. Well, yeah. um, I was going to go for like ten minutes. <laughs> So I think Max. this is like one of the differences between men and women, right? Yeah. Ten minutes, two hours. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And it's funny because you look at it with a different end result. You know, if you're just looking at it just to relax and enjoy the time that's passing, there's no rush to get to the end. There's no rush. You're just in the moment. Mm. And, you know, when you're in the moment and you're feeling good, it time seems to fall. Yeah, 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 okay. <laughs> yeah. Fair so, enough. So women need... Uh, 
It's as, it's like the recommendation is at least fifteen minutes of foreplay. Fifty or fifteen? Fifteen. Fifteen minutes. Yeah. But when I tell oh. women that, they kind of say, "Couldn't you? Like, can I tell my partner it's forty-five? Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, there's nothing wrong with going for a longer period of time foreplay. We, you know, men like, f- you know, right? But it's got to be a connection. It's obviously got to be both of you. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, full play. And it doesn't necessarily. And it's also after after play, too, because a lot of times women have multiple orgasms after the man has an orgasm. So it's still going on once one of them is finished, the other one could still be going. Yeah, okay. Right? Yes. Yes. So it's not like. So how do we know that you've had enough? Because you know, with us, we're done. We're like, you know, there's a certain moment where we have an orgasm, but if girls have multiple orgasms, how do you know that we know that you're done? Make sense? I think the woman would communicate, I think I'm done. I don't think I have anything else in me. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and I I, I always think communication is a really important part there. Do you want another orgasm? Do you want to keep going? Or are you Mm. finished? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that there's something something biological. I don't know the biological... I don't know what happens when you have an orgasm. I don't know what happens, like, with the cells. Mm. But is there a reserve of orgasm? Like, can you have endless amounts of orgasm? Or is is there actually, like... A reserve of fluid that no longer is there that you can't. <laughs> so go, okay. Sheena. Go, Sheena. I, I like this. Um, are you are you talking about female ejaculation mm-hmm. as well? Well, yeah, um, yeah orgasm, like I just uh, orgasm or female ex- ejaculation. I, is there a, a, an end to the well? Like, I, and is that when you stop? Or yeah. I'd be interested. If, well, I, you know, I, I mean, I'm kind of interested to explore where that edge is, and if, for for you to explore where that edge mm. is as well. Mm. Um, I think for everyone, it's going to be different. Like, uh, women can definitely have quite a number of orgasms at a time. Um, in tantra, for example, we can also have orgasms that last up to 15 minutes. So really? Yeah. Wow. And, and they've measured this in, um, you know, I guess in the, the machines, like the MRI machines yep, yep. as well. So orgasms can actually last for an extended period yep. of time. Um, but I think really it's up to every woman. For, for some women, sometimes like one is enough. And then, you know, like men, we kind of get a bit sensitive mm. but other times we can have orgasm after orgasm and sometimes it takes just a few seconds or a few minutes rest mm. or mm. Uh, less stimulation for us to feel like we can go again we can go again yeah exactly so we're just talking about uh, just off t- slightly off topic um, Jeff Jower just came in the mm. studio massive fan of him massive fan of you, you as well Asaya and he was mentioning a book called Man's Search for Meaning I don't know if you've ever read this I book. Haven't. And he does, uh, uh, Victor E. Frankel does a study on logotherapy. That's his form of therapy. And he mentioned in the book about, you know, um, women's orgasms. And he said, he was saying that when he was coaching people in the 50s and 40s when he brought his logotherapy out, he's saying that try not to, uh, for a woman, try not to f- f- think about trying to have an orgasm and you touched on it as well think about trying to be in a relaxed state and enjoy the situation no matter how long it's going for exactly. is that correct exactly so one of the things that gets in the way of women's enjoyment um, and you know and their orgasm is so many women say to me I just can't switch off I can't get out of my head I can't stop thinking during mm. sex and it's like we have so much going on during the day I see you nodding Sheena you're like yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so a lot of women kind of report this so Absolutely, like being able to come back down into your body to do something like deep breathing. So you're just focusing on the feeling and the sensation Mm. and following that kind of pleasure and intimacy Mm. is one of the things that helps us get there. Mm. Because for women who are not having an orgasm, and often we misjudge how long it's going to take a woman to have an orgasm as well. So really quickly women can go into, oh my God, I'm taking too long to warm up. I'm ta- it's taking too mm. long, it's mm. not happening, what's he thinking? Mm. I don't want him to think he's like doing it wrong. Mm. And then that that kind of anxiety actually means that they have less chance. Yeah, exactly right. Them. So, <laughs> so it's a more of an anxious, it's the anxiety, is, that's the thing that's causing all these problems in this in the bedroom. Look, that's a, a big a big thing that causes problems in the bedroom. Is it, is it because there's an expectation as well? Definitely. From both sides? You know, so the the guy's thinking he has to perform, and then two minutes is gone. It's like I'm done. I'm like, I'm anxious. 
And then from the woman's side, she's like, what's he thinking about? And like, a bit, a bit self-conscious maybe, is that right? Absolutely, I, I think, um, so anxiety is often present around sex because it's not something we're used mm. to talking about. It's something that, you know, is very intimate and can be really vulnerable. Mm. Um, yeah, so anxiety is around a lot of the time and we know that any kind of stress, whether it's like life stress, you know, you're so busy or you're, you're feeling anxious and stressed, yeah. you know, in the bedroom, perhaps it's the first time or not the first time you're with someone, uh, that's all really bad for your sex life. It's really yeah. bad for feelings of being turned on. So, so what do we do? What do we do? So, like you've just touched on, it's like focus on coming back to your body, feeling pleasure and really connecting mm. with the person that you're with. I, I mean, I always think, I mean, I, I think there's nothing wrong with, you know, one night stands and going out for hookups, but I think sex gets better mm. the longer that you know someone. Mm. Well, that's what I was going to say. Every woman is different, so every experience you have with a woman is going to be different, and then that takes a long time to master. So, you know, yeah, like you were saying, the longer you're with someone, the easier it gets, and the more comfortable you are, yeah. and, and the more predictable, you know, mm. so it's it's... It's almost like, yeah, it's like a muscle, like we talked about before, and and even with the partner, you're you're a muscle together. And if you go to a second partner or a third, and you, you have to re, re relearn, relearn, because exactly. every woman is different. Every yes. every woman likes different things, and exactly, exactly. And sexual communication is really important as well, because you know, women, we like different things on different days. What what worked yesterday? Probably not gonna work for us today. Oh, I'm just holding my face, guys, guys and girls out there. How do we know what you want on that day? I have to ask us. Yes, you yes. have to ask us. And and women, we have to learn for ourselves what we like and be willing to to communicate. I communicate it. that. That's another thing that people don't do is communicate together what they like and what they don't yeah. like. But yes, and I think it's really important to do that outside of the bedroom and then inside the bedroom. So to have those conversations where you're not in the moment about, hey, are you interested in trying this? Hey, I was you know, hearing about this or I found this on the internet today. Is this something you'd be willing to try with me one day? And then being able to talk about it in the moment too. Faster, slower, this is what I need right now, just a little bit higher. Yeah. Um, so that we, we are getting exactly what we want and exactly what, what feels good for us. So do you think that it'd be like just to change the mold a little bit, just to help men relax, just say from women's side, something like, I'm, um, you know, I don't know, like just being on, like having that honest communication as well yeah. from both sides. Yes. So is it a man, are you asking the man to ask the questions or are you saying from both sides? I'm saying bo both are really important. So men, ask the question, you know, are yeah. you enjoying this? Enjoy Harder, this. softer, faster, slower. Mm -hmm. yeah. And women, give him the feedback as well. And I don't know about you, Liam, but I find that guys tend to respond better to like positive mm. kind of reinforcement. 100%. Rather. <laughs> we don't want negative, but we just want, yeah, just some, some form of positive. Yeah. Guided, guided in the direction where you want us to go and still have a, you know, some sort of positive to back it up. Exactly. Relaxes. Yeah, right, exactly. So actually the research has shown that um, good sexual communication isn't just about asking for what you want, it's being able to give positive feedback mm -hmm. to your partner on what they're doing well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so, you know, when they do get it right, ladies, let them know. Let yeah. them know, yeah, that's that's it, you've got it. Yeah. Uh, show them some appreciation <laughs> and she encouragement. I'm sitting here like... <laughs> she knows, she's in the background. <laughs> I was going to say, I think there's something to be said at the beginning to allow each other to be vulnerable as well. Like, just say, you know what, this is, I want to know, I want to please you, I want to know what you want, and, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable, it's okay to to talk about it, you know? So, I think having, before you dive in and start talking, make sure that the person knows that you're safe, mm. and that, 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 you know, you can open up, you can be vulnerable, and if you haven't established that at the beginning, it's going to be really hard, I think, to go fully in, and... Mm. It's true. So, and one of the things that um, increases women's chance of having an orgasm, increases sexual desire, and increases sexual satisfaction is actually overall relationship satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So, when couples feel like they trust each other, feel like they're intimate and connected, um, know that they can talk about things, the the sexual satisfaction mm -hmm. in the relationship mm -hmm. improves as well. Yeah, I've got two questions. One is. Do you think that, like, I don't know how to word this one, it's being a sexologist, like a therapist, how do you not take their stuff on board? 
you know, like if they're negativity and like you have to be so solid, what do you do in order to keep yourself solid? Like a psychologist, a psychiatrist has couples therapy. How do they keep themselves solid? You know, how do you do that? Yeah, well, I'm a psychotherapist as well and a couples mm. therapist as well. Mm. So uh, that's definitely one of the things that, that I'm working with. You know, couples are, aren't always in the best place when mm. they come to see me and, and mm. I don't expect them to be. And mm. talking about sex can, can feel really challenging. And for a lot of people, I'm the first person they've spoken to about it. There's, you know, often emotion around it. Mm. So for me, firstly, my self-care is really important, mm. like making sure I'm only seeing a certain number of clients per week. I have a limit on the number of clients that I can see mm. and then that I'm getting out and doing the things that kind of nourish me and, and fill me up as well, that I'm meditating every morning, yeah. that I'm eating really well. And I think it's, you know, I feel often for my clients when, you know, when they come in and, and it's really just being able to kind of feel for them but then not take it mm. outside of the room with me. Do absolutely everything that I can yeah. while they're sitting in front of me, taking a few minutes after mm. to kind of debrief and, mm. um, and clear it away. I think it's a really good question. Like yeah, thank you very much. That often. Let's, let's go the other way now, immature question, foreplay. Oh yeah. Fifteen minutes. What are we doing in this fifteen oh, minutes? Oh, really? Just good this is practical step by step it's advice. Just kissing. Yeah. What is it like? What is it? Just yeah. t- so tickling. What? What do you want? It? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, as soon as I say tickle, <laughs> come, what's going on here? Have you ever? Sorry, coconut oil. Oh yes. What, what about coconut, coconut oil? oil? You got to bust it out. Bust it out. It, it's okay. A, it's a bit of a cure all. It's a cure all. So I, I think coconut oil is an amazing massage oil. It so it's massage. Be, uh, yeah, it can also be used as a lubricant. So if you wanted to do genital massage, um, okay. and so she I, says it I, so casually. I, I know. Yes. I'm so I'm so excited about it. So I have a course uh, coming out next year, an online course for couples, and I'm going to be teaching cock and pussy massage in this, in this online workshop. She just said and cock and pussy. I think I said that last time. I heard you might have said to it say it again. I know. I, I just want to say, say it as well. She said to say it again. <laughs> Oh, because how much fun to yeah. learn how to to learn how, how to really do that. There. How are you going to do that? Are you going to get a banana and and, and so, so not, I yeah, have actually, a, that's a, a that's banana. A chance. I, I have I have props that I use in in coaching because mm. obviously there's no nudity in my in my therapy and coaching. I have the same standards of like a, a regular psychologist or yep. psychotherapist. So to. I have a puppet. I should I'll bring it if if I come back for you guys. <laughs> if I, I bring the puppet, puppet in. I have a vulva puppet. The third, <laughs> third installment of our sire has to bring the puppet in. This is so just like our, the third day. I'm you're gonna get to see my vulva. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Lucky you can't finish that sentence there. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. uh, and I also have a suction cup dildo that I um, <laughs> use to demonstrate. I know, and do you know what? I have to tell you, so I was, I, was, I was on the bus uh, going to work not so long ago. And of course, like, you know, I often throw these things into my, into my handbag because you just never know when you're going to need it with clients, when you might need to, you know, explain something. So I'm on the bus and I'm pulling things out of my bag to, you know, what women's handbags yeah. are like, to like, you know, find something at the bottom. And like I realized that out on the seat is like this vulva puppet and this suction cup dildo. And like the woman behind, I like turn around and she's like looking at me and she goes, that's a lovely coat you're wearing, dear. (laughs) (laughs) I like put them all, all the things like back into my bag. It reminds me when I went um, to Las Vegas for my bachelorette party, I was um, surprised with my sister and a whole bunch of friends. And as we were, um, they got me all kinds of like, you know, dildo you know, pencils and all this stuff like sex related. And they got me this dildo gun <laughs> that it was like it's penis with, with you put water in it and and so I packed it in my bag. I packed all the stuff in my bag. Yeah. And at the airport I got pulled aside oh, no. and they had to look in my bag and they pulled out the gun. Oh no. I was like mortified. I was like, Oh my god, I'm so embarrassed. You probably wow. made their day. That was like the one exciting thing that they got to check for the day. <laughs> So let me come back to foreplay yes. for you, Leah. Yes, yes, do this. So I don't know if you've ever heard, like, foreplay for women starts at breakfast, right? And I... What it, have, no, I've, I've heard of that, but I don't know what it means. So it, it means, like, that the, the emotional context and what's going on around us, like, is really important for uh, women's willingness and their kind of readiness to engage yeah, in okay. sex as well. So kind of, you know, warming, warming each other up by saying nice things to each other, um... 
sending sexy messages throughout the day. Uh, and for women, like, you know, putting on your sexy lingerie in preparation, like all of that stuff is, is really important and yeah. really helpful. And so then when we actually get to the, you know, the more physical foreplay part, any kind of loving touch, like your your tickles, Sheena, mm -hmm. is going to be really helpful. So anytime we're like we're engaging in in like just loving touch, we're going to be releasing a hormone called oxytocin, yep. which is like the loving, bonding, connected hormone. It's also really important for women's lubrication, so okay. also getting us turned on and in the mood. Yeah. So massage, touch, um, having genital touch included in there, so yeah. that's where the cock and pussy massage can be really <laughs> helpful as well. Uh, deep kissing, so kissing is amazing. Um, when we're kissing someone... Deep kissing. Deep kissing, all right, so deep kissing is like, you know, like French deep. kissing, using your tongue, like passionate, mm, passionate, loving kissing. When we kiss, you know, we obviously swap saliva, mm. and so as we get turned on, we have all these hormones and endorphins that, you know, that are going through the body, like it's like it's sexy time, the body's gearing up for that. <laughs> when we kiss, we actually swap those hormones with each other. So yeah. women may actually take on some of the testosterone that starts to get them in the mood, um, but we start to share these hormones and endorphins that help take our arousal higher. Mm. Yeah. Oral sex is another really, really great one yeah. for, uh, for foreplay. And that's uh, one of the things that we know increases a woman's chance of reaching orgasm yep. as well. Um, and so giving and receiving oral sex so, can be really um, good for that. So just out of curiosity as well, so the, when it starts at breakfast, does that mean that's part of the 15 minutes? Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look, unless you've been like, you know, it is a, I mean, quick is still possible. Yeah, Don't yeah. get me wrong. But there, there's got to be this kind of build up around yeah, it. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. That's understandable. What, do you have any questions, Sheena, for uh, Sarah? I'm still thinking. You're still thinking? About the... What? The... <laughs> the puppet. Oh, the <laughs> puppet. The, the vulva okay. puppet. The vulva puppet. I can't... It's a mouthful to say that. Vulva puppet. Does she have a name? <laughs> no. No, I have not, I've never named her. I've just called her the vulva puppet. <laughs> I've got some it, questions from my mates. Oh, just okay. Like, okay. Well, just a random one. Like, it was just... This is a couple of days ago. They, were, they had some graphic ones. I'm not going to go there. Thank so, you. yeah, I'm just going to let you just slide on that one. So, the boys was asking, does size matter for a girl? Ah. Uh, look, every woman, I think, is going to say something different yeah. on that. I think to a point, size matters. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 and that's, like, both ways as mm -hmm. well because, I, you know, I have definitely heard reports of it being too big. Yeah. Right, so we don't want to, we don't want to be in pain. Yeah. Like yeah, you know, definitely. every every time we have sex, um, yeah. women's uh, vaginas are most sensitive, like the first inch or two mm. in. So actually, we're going to be able to feel the most the first inch or two, okay. and that's part of why um, you know you'll often hear saying like girth over yeah. length mm. is better. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting. But I, I think it really does depend on how you're using it. Mm. And so if you're spending, you know, time in foreplay, you know, using your hands, oral sex, mm. that the actual size of the penis is going to be much less yeah. important. Yeah. The girls talk about it though, don't they? The girls do talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Just damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I have talk. a question. I do have a question. How important is makeup sex? What do you mean makeup? Like, like when somebody gets in an argument and they call that makeup sex, like it, if, you, if you have a big argument, you're supposed to come together and rejoin. That's more passionate, isn't it? After that, when you well, they makeup. call it makeup sex. Like mm. it's supposed to be the best sex ever. Do you know I've never really been into makeup sex? Mm. I, not really? No, not my thing. Anytime there's sex involved, I mean, it's got to be a good time, right? I'm just throwing that out there. I would think it would be hard for somebody to, to, to be vulnerable after an argument, you know, or after, after their feelings have been hurt. And it, it can be hard, and it can be hard to be turned on as well, because our body is often still in that kind of stress mm -hmm, response mm -hmm. rather than the, you know, the, the sexual response, mm -hmm. and, and our bodies aren't designed to be both mm -hmm. at the same time. I, so I, how do you deal with that? If a man wants to have sex, and the woman's still angry, and there's totally, you know, they're not on the same page, so... Yeah. Uh, and that, I, like, I think that that question is really important for just generally as well. Mm. One partner wants to have sex and the other doesn't. I think after an argument, it's really important to come back together in some way and to be able to kind of work out together 
what, how do we come back together after an argument? How do we show each other love, care, affection after we've mm. had an argument? And doing things that help to calm the nervous system down mm. are going to be really important for that. So like sitting down, holding mm. hands, having everything, just kind of decompress a little bit, uh, sharing um, you know, words of appreciation with each other, mm. just reminding each other how much you, you love each other and, and are connected. And some kind of physical touch can be really helpful mm. as well. Mm. Um, you know, physical touch, it's that oxytocin, mm. it's loving connection. It can help us to, to calm down so we're not in that fight or flight mm. anymore. And I think always if, if one partner wants to have sex and the other doesn't, mm. it's being able to communicate about that and kind of finding a middle ground. Mm. So I'm not, you know, I just don't think I can have sex with you right now. Like I just don't think I'm in the mood for that. Can we just cuddle? Can we just kiss for a few minutes? Mm. You know, let me see how things are going. So at least both partners then are connected. You know, the, the partner that feels like having sex is getting, mm. you know, some kind of attention and love. And um, the, uh -huh. you know, the, the partner who, who might still be angry mm -hmm. is, you know, is actually thinking about the other mm -hmm. person and, mm -hmm. and offering some kind of uh, mm. appreciation. That's nice. <laughs> okay. So uh, and, and half makeup sex, if that really works for you, it just, uh, I don't know, it hasn't quite been my thing. So if a new relationship comes together, right? So mm. man and woman comes together, well, if, you, if you're gay, then man and man, or woman and woman, whatever the relationship is, comes together to prevent anything negative or separation, what's the one thing that couples can do just to make sure that they can stay solid? Is it just the communication? Like, I'm in outside the relationship, I mean outside the, outside outside the bedroom, bedroom and inside the bedroom. Is that the one thing that's missing, do you think? Or is it just a multiple thing? Yeah, I think communication, but vulnerability has to go with the communication. So we can't have intimacy without vulnerability. And all the communication in the world is actually not that helpful unless we're being really honest and open and, and sometimes vulnerable around that as well. So, um, you know, just sharing how it is we're feeling and, and what's actually going on for us can, can bring us closer yep. together. Yeah, okay, so that's the one thing. Vulner uh, two things, vulnerability and communication right from the get-go. Uh, yeah, that's, how that's where we're going to get really, really strong relationships. Yeah, from. okay. But, you know, making the relationship important mm. is, is right up there for me. So we're in such a busy kind of world at the moment. If we're not taking time and making time for the relationship, then, you know, it's going to suffer. We need to treat each other like, to like we're important. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. So it's, you know, it's giving it time and attention. Yeah. She's, she's on to something I here. Know. And Sorry. can we learn more about the courses that you're going to launch next year? Yes. And, and um, yeah, and you, you said that you, you still see people. Are, are there any spots? Because last time you didn't have any spots in your schedule. So... <laughs> Yeah, you're saying all this wonderful things, but you know we want to see you and, and, and book in and how does that yeah, happen? So we want to see you. Is this because you just want well, to see the we. puppet? I'm, I'm She's gonna me. bring the puppet in here. I'm talking, and we want to hear. I'm talking, definitely want to hear. I'm this talking online about course. the mass public. We, we a yeah, collective we. Yeah. we. Yeah, we do want to see this online course. But what are these? What are they? Yeah, so I'm running an online course for, for couples called Intimacy and Desire, which is really about, you know, being connected, but then kind of taking your sex life to the next level mm -hmm. as well. So, um, you know, communication, really important around sex, but where do we ever learn to do that? Like, mm -hmm. where do we ever learn to have those kind of important conversations about what do you like? Well, this is what I like. Um, and where are we ever taught like how to discover what it is we like mm. as well? Mm. So lots of um, techniques and scripts for talking about things together and then some really fun kind of activities for working out what it is that, that you each like. Uh, you know, looking at some of the messages that we might be holding on to mm. about sex. Because, um, you know, we can all have some kind of negative beliefs in there, and particularly women, as mm. I said. So there will be a little bit in there about, you know, how to have more positive sexual attitudes mm. as well. Uh, and then some of the really practical, fun practical things, like a little bit of Tantra, the massage that we've already talked about. Yep. Um, so really kind of fun, just really kind of fun activities that couples do together. Uh, there'll be, you know, some videos, PDFs, worksheets. So you uh, join the course homework. and you get to do all this kind of fun homework, very fun homework. <laughs> when is it launching? 
Uh, so this is launching next year in um, in March, actually. Awesome. So it's actually, you know, it's not that far away once yeah. we get uh, over Christmas. Yeah. Um, and in February, I'm launching a course for women. So a lot of women that I talk to kind of know, or they'll say to me, like, oh, I know that I've got things in the relationship to work on, but I just want to work on myself first. Mm. Like, I know that some of this is is about me. They know that they're holding themselves back, perhaps from finding the right person or perhaps from like letting go more mm. in the bedroom and really being able to enjoy themselves. So mm. I'm running an online course for women where we get to explore those mm. kinds of things. Like, you know, how we choose relationships. We might always choose the wrong guy. Uh, what it is that stops us, um, you know, really just letting go and enjoying ourselves mm. more. Some practical things in there. So I'm really, really excited about yep. that one as well. Um, and in the meantime, I do have have some coaching therapy places open oh. between now and Christmas okay. for couples uh, and all my therapy and coaching is online uh, so we, we work via Skype which I yeah. love mm -hmm. um, which I really love so really convenient uh, it's obviously really private mm -hmm. yeah. um, and you know lots of um, fun homework in mm -hmm. coaching for couples as well so whether it's around sex or relationships that they're coming to see me there's often homework that they yeah. get around that wow <laughs> she's got kind of a lot going on yeah. 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 Well, I mean, you know, this is an area. This is an area that people really want more on and, mm. and need more on, and it's you know, it's something that I'm really passionate about supporting that, people with. I don't think those free websites out there are doing what you're doing justice. Right. And you know, it's so hard because so many of my clients have said, you know, we looked up something on the internet or we bought some sex toys, but they didn't quite know how to implement it in the right way or they didn't quite get the right support so then they can end up feeling um, like a little discouraged mm -hmm. rather than having like the step-by-step -step mm -hmm. support or for couples who are struggling you know, more in the relationship sense and that's what's contributing to issues in their sex life um, you know as we've said like relationship satisfaction is really important to mm -hmm. desire and orgasm it's really important that we work through that yeah. first mm -hmm. so I love bringing the relationship component into it as yeah. well and so, uh, I asked this one before, but you can still do the course if you're single? If you do your online course, can you still do it? Or is it more targeted towards relationships? It's more targeted towards relationships, this one. Um, the, the women's course, uh, which I have, and then the, the couples course, I don't have a course for just men mm. at the moment. So there's maybe a there's, a, there's something in gap in the market. Yeah. Gap in the market there. <laughs> I bet. Would Asaya, you do one for I men? bet. I bet. I mean, there's a, probably a lot of men out there. I reckon more men would buy that, would that course yeah. than women would buy that course. Yeah. You know? So it's like women when they buy, they always buy fitness fitness activities more. But men right. would buy the the sex stuff first, I that's, reckon. No, it's quite possible. Mm. It's quite possible. So you're, you'd be multi, multi, multi millionaire. I know you're not doing it for that, but I think I, I can speak on <laughs> behalf of men anyway. Right? He'll be your okay. business coach. <laughs> there you go, Liam. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there's, okay, so for, for any men, there's you know there's a whole bunch of articles and things that you can that yep. you can read on, on my website. On website. What yeah. is this website again? Oh, uh, so my we'll website. Re, re yeah. encourage people yes. to visit this website. Thank you. www.asaya, which is I S I. H hyphen McKimmy, which mm -hmm. is M C K I double M I E mm -hmm. uh, dot com. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. You have or they can they can like you on Facebook? Oh, yeah, they that? can like me on Facebook. Because you've got you lots of good on information Facebook. on there too. Yes. Yeah. 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 Lots of um yeah, and you'll see more and more videos coming out on Facebook. Yeah. You'll see this on Facebook as exactly well. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. See this on Facebook. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure I'm sure my mates will be watching this uh, as they as they Highlands did last time. <laughs> <laughs> You There's could it. probably just do a whole group of his friends and you can just stand up there and teach them all. Just a group, See, group they'll, just be, they'll be taking notes, they'll be so <laughs> engaged. The majority of them couldn't couldn't sit in a school uh, a classroom at all, but if you're just talking about that subject, they're in. Right. right. Mm, well, well it's the important stuff, isn't it? Exactly These are life right. skills. That, exactly right. Yeah. I, I've got one more question. It's yeah. a random one, but how important is it to, for people out there, for especially guys, because they think they need to go out and drink alcohol. I think I might have mentioned this last mm. time. So they need to go out and drink alcohol. Women do it as well, I'm not saying just men, but how important is it to do the other way and go, if you're going out and you're a single person and you want to go out and socialize, how important is it just to take away that alcohol and, just, and meet someone with that honest connection straight away? And if you do have that one night stand, it might be a lot better. Because if you have alcohol, you're more likely to yeah, I don't know how to say this in a non, uh, you can't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, so that's often where, um, and I don't know if we talked about this last time, but that's often where sexual dysfunction can start for men. Mm -hmm. They go out and they're either stressed or they're drinking too much and things don't function mm -hmm. the way they're used to at worky, and then that kind of contributes to the anxiety mm -hmm. for next time. So I always think, you know, go out, enjoy yourself, have a couple of drinks if, if that's your thing, but, you know, like, like everything in moderation. Um, and I think it is important to have sober sex. Yep. Um, I, you know, I end up working with couples who are like in their thirties, for example, that have just never learned to have sex together sober. So, although it can be fun, and I think like there's there's room for for both, because it can be fun to kind of um, lower your inhibitions a bit yep. and have a lot of fun. But then we're kind of missing out on that intimacy. We're missing out on some sensation mm. when we're, you know, kind of um, dulling ourselves a little bit with yeah. alcohol. So yeah, go out, meet someone. We, you know, we live in a very alcohol fueled culture, yeah. but it definitely can be so helpful. To, and it, to even not. in a relationship, if you, you know, if the guy can't get it up or the girl's, you know, not in the mood, like it's just a something to be going back that communication just making sure that they're honest and open about it exactly so, uh, and and what you're about is being having that light-hearted sense about it so like you know how important is it to laugh that thing those things off yeah the, those is really important when when a couple can kind of laugh about it communicate about it and be really generous to each other about it we know that the impacts of, of any kind of um, sexual challenge or dysfunction are are less. Um, yeah. And actually, a client said to me this week in, in sessions that she's surprised at how much we laugh in our sessions because I think, you know, not that I'm ever laughing to make fun of everyone, but yeah. having that kind of sense of lightheartedness mm. um, can be really, really helpful in the in the kind of um, the healing and treatment process. Definitely. Oh, I've got one more, I promise. D do you find it difficult because of your tagline of being a sexologist? men approaching you a lot more or, and do you find that difficult to push them away or are you in a long-term relationship yourself how does that work so i'm in a relationship mm. i find um that i get a lot of um uh requests on, yeah. on facebook um uh, particularly I, I would say like particularly in countries where that it, that are not very open mm -hmm. about sex. I'll often get a lot of questions and friend requests um, yeah. from from uh, particularly men in, in countries like that. Yeah, uh, yeah approaching me in, in various kind of ways. How does ways. your partner feel about that then? Um, I mean, my partner knows that that doesn't. That's not kind of a comparison. Exactly to, right. To yeah. Does he laugh it off? Is that an, an, an essence of something to? I'd laugh that off. I mean, if, if Emily was a sexologist and she's getting approached by guys, I'd just find it funny more than anything. But I just yeah. I don't know if that would weigh you down. Like, yeah. Because of the tagline of what you... It's a taboo subject. More, more is. men out there will try and approach you. And I think I tend to be... Um, you know, if I, if I meet someone, you know, on a plane, in an Uber, you know, at a bar, I, um, you know, I might perhaps lead with the fact that I'm a couples therapist rather yeah, than I'm a sexologist. sexologist. Um, but I'm a I sexologist, and we discussed this last yes. time. Yeah, have definitely yes. studied sex. Exactly right, so we're both sexologists. <laughs> we're all sexologists, aren't we? <laughs> Yeah. So, like, I think it's really important to talk about, but yeah, you're right. There, there are some kind of personal, you know, uh, personal complications that yeah. uh, that you know I don't always want to want to deal with. Yeah, exactly. Right. I just find it, it. I do find it a bit fascinating because you, it, it'd be, it would actually would be quite difficult having that tagline. I, f yeah. I feel, and just to make sure that understanding what you do, and you know, it's good to that you're going back to meditation and getting back to. Um, internalizing things or we're just making sure that not internalizing pushing things down but working on yourself consistently yeah. and that, that's how you can translate that goodness yeah. into the world that yeah right? that, that's how I show up for my clients by really yeah. taking care of, of myself first and mm -hmm. I think it's something like that all of us need to do and mm -hmm. it's part of why I love the work that you guys are doing here thank you uh, you know because it's about taking care of ourselves so we can serve the world yeah. mm -hmm. awesome oh. that's a wrap isn't it on that note we're finishing up we're overtime right now we've got no one else in here so anyway <laughs> that is it that 
Do you have any final thoughts, Shana? No, I just want you back in with the puppets. All right. <laughs> I want to see these guys. Um, all right, next time. Yeah. Next time, puppets. So the the, the series three. Yeah. The third series. I like it. She, she could be a reoccurring guest, right? I want to see her do this. I can visualize this now. Can, they're going to do the, some little two minute skit. It's, I, I know. <laughs> with the puppets? It's, uh, I, I tend to usually do one at a time. <laughs> <laughs> You sit there and you do this? You, it does have a little place for my hand, but I, I don't really make it talk. I just, um, I just use it as a display item. Display item, okay, fair enough. Okay, next one. I'll, I'll explain it all. You'll get to see it all. When you I love yeah. it. So tune in, guys. Next tune time guys. the puppets will be with us. Yeah. And that will be instructional. Like, oh, yeah. Instructional. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Step by step sure process. You, um, yeah, get your get your questions ready. Get, get your friends lined ready. up. We can have them outside. And <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They'll make their debut on the radio. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Thank you so much for your time Thank again, you so Asaya. That's been an awesome and privilege to Thanks chat to you Sarah. again. Thank you for donating your time. Thank you. As always, been a pleasure sitting down with you once again, Sheena, on another episode of our um, weekend wellness weekend show. Weekend wellness show live on Bondi Radio. <laughs> I've got no final thoughts. I'm all out of questions. I've been having an absolute fantastic show today. It's been an absolute privilege to bring Jeff How oh, I was going to say Jeff. Jeff Joward and Asaya down here in a world's colliding interview <laughs> of weight loss and sex. <laughs> Last time was just a day of sex. Now it's weight loss and sex, bringing it both together. But in everything, the method of it all is making sure that we get back to yourself. Yes. Yeah. There was a common theme in that. Common theme in that. And that's where, that's where they are, translated, I mm. think. So thank you so much for your time, guys and girls. Until next week. Woo! Thank you. <laughs>